Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're back at the chapel and we're gonna begin putting the pipework into the boiler room. I just wanna say thank you very much to everybody who subscribed. We're at 500 subscribers now and I really appreciate it. So thank you very much for the support. So what we do is we'll rip the old boiler out and we'll get the pipes in. So just to show you some of the things that I didn't put in the last video, we've got the underfloor heating manifold flow and return in now and they're ready to drop down once the wall's been plastered. So we also joined all the pipes together in this boiler room and got it all pressure tested. So Bailey teed them all in nice and neatly. He's spurred off with a bit of 15 mil, added an isolation valve and a pressure gauge and it's all sitting nice at six bar. So in this chapel boiler room, we're gonna be using the Wall Raven Unistrut system. It's the Wall Raven Rapid Rail, and these fixings are called Hammer Fix. These slide directly into the rail. They come pre-made, so it's nice and easy, and you just twist them in. So sitting on those are gonna be these rubber-lined Euro-style clips. Um, so we've got a variation of 28, 15, and 22. And uh, the reason we're using this Unistrut type system is because we are adding phases onto this job later, so it means we can step it off from the wall, add different components, different zone valves if necessary, and it won't be too much of a problem. So the first step is to get this rapid rail mounted onto the wall in the correct locations, and then we can start mounting some pipe work. So before we start any boiler room, I always come up with a pipe work layout plan. I'll ask Bailey to do the same, we'll compare the two, we'll take the best ideas of both and implement them into the final product. So we've got the boiler out of the boiler room now, all the pipe work's been taken out and we've pretty much got a blank canvas to work on. So just to explain to you how we're setting this up, we're gonna bring the existing oil boiler forward and also spin it so it's facing the door so it's more accessible for servicing. We're, this window here is gonna be blocked up eventually so we don't have to worry too much about flue distances. So from the boiler up here on the left, we're gonna have our flow and return, which is gonna pick up a return pump, which then will lead into a low loss header. From that low loss header, we're gonna have a pump, a filter, then the pipe work's gonna drop down into our zone valves, pick up our flows on this manifold here, and also, two separate flows which is going to be run into phase two of this job into the other part of the building as well as that the return is going to come down here pick up on this manifold and then we will run a common return all the way along here which will then pick up from our twin unbended cylinders which we are plumbing in in parallel okay so we're starting to get the pipe work set out now on this rapid route and i just want to show you how quick and easy these hammer fixings are to install so what you do is you push them into position on the rail and then you've got two green tabs either side which you then twist and then that locks it into position and then from there you can slide it left or right. Once you're happy with your position you can tighten up this nut and then you can install your Euro clip onto the thread. Okay, so we're starting to get some pipes on the wall now, just getting our zone valves in position. So the good thing about these wall raisers of Unistrite, you can slide them along in place, so it makes everything a lot quicker. So you can just get it all roughly set up first. Flow and return on the left, low loss head is gonna go up there. We're actually a little bit tight for space now, so we're probably gonna put the pump on the right hand side. So what I'm gonna do now is get everything drained down that we've um, tested yesterday, and I can start um, elbowing off these pipes here and bringing them up into the Euro clips. Okay, so I'm just setting up the zone valves now and just making sure I get them nice and level. I'm pretty sure in total we're gonna have five zones here. We just need to confirm that with the client. 
So what I'm doing is I'm actually going to have a 28 mil pipe running across all of them here and then they branch off down to 22 mil so hopefully that will um, increase the flow rate to all of them. And then up here, Bailey's just starting to get the main runs in for the low loss header. So our low loss header, which hasn't arrived, is going to go up here. And like I said before, we're going to have pump, etc. in here. One thing that I'm actually not too sure about is we always put an auto bypass in, even if we have a low loss header. So I noticed that a lot of other guys don't put them if they've got a low loss header. But if you know the answer to that question, let me know. But just uh, make sure we comply with building regulations, we always put one in. Okay, so I've just got these all soldered up now and I just wanted to show you what they look like before I get them all cleaned up. So one tip I have for soldering is, especially when you're doing T's or couplings when the pipe's vertical, is always start at the top. So for example, on these T's I start on the left and the right and then what I do is actually use the blowtorch to drag the heat down to the bottom. So I don't normally have to add any solder on the bottom fitting, I'll just drag it through and then that will give you a nice neat finish. So these are all soldered up now and I just want to show you how much better it looks when you use fine wire wool. So rather than the standard stuff that you get from a plumber's merchant, so if you go to like tool station or screw fix, you can pick up the fine wire wool and it will just clean it up nice and neat, make it all nice and shiny. You don't have to apply any bra, so anything like that. And it will also make it look like you're a soldering pro. So you can see like how much difference that makes by using fine wire wool. Comes up nice and shiny. So you can see here on one of the fittings I've actually got a solder run. So one tip I would give you is when you're applying the solder is to add it to the back of the fitting. So from the front, the side of what you visually see, normally any runs or any blobs that you might get will actually be on the back so you won't visually be able to see them from the front. So this one has just crept slightly forward to the front. So if I just wire wall it up, should hopefully hide it in plain sight. Okay, so we've got the bulk of this manifold section in now and we need to start joining onto these returns down here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run them down the wall, around the perimeter here, and the plan is to bring the flow and return cold feeds through the center of the cylinders to make it look real fancy. Okay, so we're at the point now where we need to start running the pie wire behind the unbending cylinders. So we've got the wrapping rail on the wall behind there and we're attempting to have bends from here all the way around and then into these circles here and also picking up the flow of the turns. These are the two unvented hot water cylinders we've been provided by the client. So they're 200 litres each in direct and we're going to be plumbing them in in parallel. Just opens up the boxes and they give you this nice little picnic bag which I guess has got the components in. So on first glance I must admit I don't like the look of them because they've just got these spigots coming out which means you have to use compression fittings which I just don't like the look of. It will be fine functionally but visually i'm not a fan of it and um, so yeah so we have to put two zone valves on so one on each and um, because you still got to make sure that they're both safe both um, shut off when they've reached temperature okay so let's open up this sandwich bag and see what we've been given for our lunch <laughs> so we've got a inlet control valve so that's your standard Telefi, usually multifunctional valve. 
So we've got cold main coming in the top, uh, balance cold, and then you can add your expansion vessel here if you need to. Pressure relief valve, and then cold VT cylinder. And what else we've got? We've got So the cylinder stat, so what you find is on unbedded cylinders a lot of the components are universal across all the different ranges. So yeah, basic cylinder stat. We need to make sure they're wired in on both to make sure the temperature is accurate across them. And then, as per usual, you get your zone valve, which is a Honeywell one. So I've had a lot of problems with Honeywell two port valve, so I don't really like fitting them, but because it comes with the cylinder, I've got to put it on. So yeah, just your standard two port, so all good, but frustratingly, no compression fittings to go on these fittings. So this pipe work here that's coming through this wall is actually gonna be feeding phase two. So these are the pipes that are going behind the cylinder, so we've got to get them in now. Bailey's just loosely putting them in at the moment and he's gonna get them all soldered up and bent around. So we'll have these all sleeved, we'll sleeve it with 28 and we'll get all these caps ready for the next stage. Right, I've just chopped in these lever valves underneath these two port valves and that just makes it a lot easier if ever there's a problem we can get them swapped out and also it's good for testing and commissioning. So I had made a mistake, the zone valve that was here was going to be feeding the hot water cylinders but when you're running the cylinders in parallel you actually need to have independent zone valve. So what we're going to do now is this pipe will still go to the um, flow on the coil to both cylinders but we'll put two zone valves near the hot water cylinders themselves so it's no problem really we just lost one there So Bailey has managed to get all the pipe work done that's going to be housed behind the cylinder so he has painstakingly run all the pipe work through into the kitchen area. All the pipe work on the black talons is now the pipes that will be feeding phase two so it's all ready to go when that starts happening. So everything's all clipped nice and neat, he's done a fantastic job of running all this pipe work getting it all looking amazing. So the cylinders are now ready to go in so we'll have one on the left, one on the right pipes coming through the center and then we're going to have the multifunctional valve at the top and hot water return on the right and then that will drop down into both cylinders so really happy with how this one's gone so far we've got to step away from this one for a while so we're moving on to another boiler room which is going to be another new project which we'll be filming so thank you very much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it feel free to subscribe and see you on the next one